Well, welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 11th of January. Now the problem uh, of excess deaths around the world is still there and I'm going to be looking at the example of Australia. And we'll also be looking at the fact that these excess deaths, at least in the UK, are occurring across the age ranges from younger people, middle-aged people, older people, all are dying at a greater rate than you would expect compared to their peers. And I am not happy with the degree to which this is not being investigated um, around the world. So I'll be giving some tips on how health authorities could do this. And trust me, it's not difficult. These things have been known for a long time. It really is quite bemusing why we're not hearing more about this. Now, the example of Australia, uh, Australian Bureau of Statistics, um, 2022, 144,650 deaths occurred by the uh, 30th of September. And, th and these were information that went up to the 30th of November. So basically, we're dealing with deaths up to the 30th of, of, uh, of September in Australia, not the full year. But the point is, this is uh, 19,986, 16% more than the historical average. And Australia correctly is taking the years before the pandemic to, uh, to calculate this. So we are seeing 16% uh, excess deaths in Australia. Um, but of course, we would expect this. They've just got over the uh, Omicron wave in Australia. So we would expect some more deaths. Uh, but for the same period, there was 8,160 deaths were due to COVID in the same period. So 8,000 of these deaths were due to uh, COVID. So we've got um, over nine, nearly 20,000 deaths. 8,160 were due to COVID. That means that non-COVID deaths were 11,826. In other words, about 60%, just a tad under 60% of the excess deaths are not COVID related. So we see the majority of excess deaths in Australia are not COVID related. Now there's some new data from the UK here. Uh, this is the latest week here, which appears to be quite a bit lower, but of course... This is over a Christmas period, so there's much less um, deaths being uh, registered in that period. But if you look at that as a bit of a blow up, of course, we know that this is the average here in black. Uh, the green is the excess deaths. The blue is the COVID related deaths. So again, we see that there's quite a lot of green above the, uh, the black line there, indicating the excess deaths um, are continuing in the United Kingdom as they were the week before. So just to put some numbers on that, this is the week ending the 30th of December 2022, so last week of the year. 9,517 deaths registered, 393 mentioned uh, coronavirus. In, in private homes, there was 36.9% more deaths than usual. A lot more people dying at home than usual. Whether these were dying from a longer term illness or whether these were suddenly found dead at home, we're not told. We just know that these are excess deaths at home, is what we know. Hospitals, there was nearly 15% more deaths than average. Um, care homes, there was 20% uh, more deaths than uh, average that we, than we would expect. Uh, other settings, there was one excess deaths, and that gives 1,593 excess deaths for the week. But as we know, uh, less are being reported uh, than we would uh, normally uh, experience. The week before, we've looked at this recently actually, but the week before, week 50, or just before we do that, it's 20%. It works out at 20.1% overall excess deaths for the, uh, for the Christmas week, the last week of the year. Now, the week before, ending the 23rd of December, um, all cause deaths, 14,530. COVID deaths accounted for 429. That's 3%. And the number of deaths above the five-year average was 1,120 in private homes. Again, we see a lot of people dying at home. Again, we're not told whether it's acute deaths, whether they've just been found dead at home, whether they would expected. They're not telling us that. It'd be good to know that. 18.8% more people dying in hospital, over 1,000 more people dying in hospital than we would expect. Care homes, 10.5% above other settings, it was 7%. That gives us a total of 2,492 2, excess deaths in the week. And of course, we need to, um, if we add that to this total for uh, 
the last week of the year, which is probably going to go up in the first week of uh, this year of 2023, um, you can see these numbers are adding up. And now I was given some uh, criticism for um, saying these deaths here. Uh, the week ending the 23rd were over the Christmas period, but of course they weren't, it was before the Christmas period. So I don't think we're seeing a recording anomaly in the excess deaths in this week, whereas we are in this week, well, the overall numbers are less, but of course these numbers are compared to previous years. Now, um, the other thing is that the excess deaths are in all age groups. Now, this is from the Office for uh, Health Improvements and Disparities, and the data only goes up to the 18th of November, but it does show it's in all uh, age groups. So let's look at some of these um, some of these uh, data here. Now, this first graphic here is uh, 18 to 24-year-olds. Now, thankfully, the number here is less. This is 100. But it's still a lot more deaths than we'd like to see in young people. But again, we see that... Um, this is the average here for the five years. We see that it is above average and has been really for some time. And if we blow that up, we can see that really quite clearly. This is what we would expect. So we see that deaths in the 0 to 24 year old age range are higher. Frustrating again, it'd be very interesting to know what proportion of these were children and what proportion of these were over the age of 12, for example, or over the age of five. Uh, but we're not, uh, we're not told that, unfortunately. But we do see the number is higher in the 0 to 24s. Uh, 25 to 49 year olds, again, the number here, these are excess deaths here. These are less deaths than we would expect. So what we see here really quite clearly is uh, over the last, uh, well, since, since July 2020, um, we're seeing more deaths in younger people than we would expect as an excess of deaths in younger people. 25 to 49s again. Again, we're seeing the excess numbers on that graphic. 25 to 49 years, and we see it quite clearly there. Again, we can see more deaths than we would expect. 50 to 64, again, the numbers here, of course, are higher because more people in this age range are dying, as we, as we would expect, but we're still seeing substantial numbers above the dotted line. The excess deaths are occurring in all uh, age groups, as we see in that blow up. Uh, this one's 50 to 64. And again, I'm afraid we're seeing much higher deaths. Very, very occasionally we're seeing lower deaths than we would expect. But nearly always we're seeing higher deaths than we would uh, expect in the 50 to 64 year old uh, age group. This is the 65 to 74s. Same pattern. Very similar pattern, 65 to 74 is again, we're seeing uh, numbers above the, the dotted line as, as we see there in the older age group. Uh, 75 to 84, again, we're seeing more deaths than we would expect. 75 to 84, again, we see that in that graphic, and we see it blown up. And um, this is the 85 pluses. And again, we're still seeing uh, excess deaths. OK, there were periods when there was less, but mostly there's higher deaths than we would expect, even in the older, even in the older uh, age group. So we're seeing that the uh, excess death is not limited to any particular age group. Now, this needs to be uh, investigated and explained because, as we've just seen, we're dealing with uh, week 51, 2,492 people dying more than we would expect, less because there was less deaths registered in the in the last week of the year. Um, so how would we investigate this? Well, this is not uh, rocket science. In fact, this is ABC of, uh, of medical research, really. Uh, how do we investigate the cause of excess deaths? Well, in 1965, the English statistician Sir Austin Bradford Hill, working with Richard Doll, uh, together they invented the clinical trial. They did the first ever proper randomised uh, controlled clinical trial in the UK looking at tuberculosis and how effective it was when it was treated with uh, streptomycin. Very conclusive uh, data. So they invented that and by looking using these these what we call Bradford Hill criteria, uh, Bradford, Sir Austin Bradford Hill and, and uh, Sir Richard Dole both uh, together identified that smoking caused lung cancer back in the 50s. Before that, it wasn't known. 
this is how powerful that uh, th this tool is. So we could use it now. Um, it's a standard tool. So it looks for the strength of the association. The larger the association, the more likely that it is causal. So if something is causing these excess deaths and um, there's a large correlation, then it's likely that the relationship is causal between whatever is the cause is and the result, which is the excess deaths. Consistency or reproducibility. Consistent findings in different persons in different places. Of course, this is exactly what we're seeing. It looks like whatever's causing the excess deaths in Australia is also causing the excess deaths in the UK because the, the, the 11, whatever it is, 12,000 miles apart, um, it looks like there's some common factor here. So, so this consistency or reproducibility appears to be there. Um, specificity, no other likely explanation. Now, this one is a bit clouded. There are possibly a range of explanations for the excess deaths, but it is possible to isolate out factors. Another Austin Hill Bradford, Bradford Hill criteria is temporality. So the effect has to occur after the cause. So whatever is, so the, the, the excess deaths is the effect. The cause has to be something that's already occurred before the excess deaths occurred. So first we must have the cause, then we must have the effect. And again, that indicates that a relationship between whatever we find is, is, uh, is causal. Sometimes there's a delay. For example, after uh, we know that asbestos exposure causes uh, a, a cancer of the pleural membranes, causes mesothelioma, but the, the delay there can be 20 years. So we need, might need to look back for a few months or a year or two, but um, is there a temporal correlation with a factor that's caused these excess deaths? And you see, by the time we take all these things into account, it really narrows the field down quite a bit for what it could possibly be. Biological gradient, is there a dose-response relationship? So a greater exposure to the core should have greater incidence of the effect. Or indeed, 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 if something is protective, there should be a lower effect the more of the cause that is given. So things could be protective as well, but that's not what we're seeing, unfortunately, with the excess deaths. We're not seeing a protective effect. We're seeing a deleterious effect. So the biological gradient with what? And again, by the time they add in that factor, that's going to cut the possibilities down again. Plausibility, is there a plausible mechanism between cause and effect? So whatever this cause is, does it make sense that there is a... Uh, a mechanism that could be causing it? Is there a reasonable sort of pathophysiological mechanism that could cause something? Coherence between epidemiological findings and laboratory findings. Now, laboratory findings can often be done very often using animal studies. In fact, on, on this very channel, we've talked about animal studies and, for example, inflammatory changes uh, that occur. We've done that several times. Sometimes it's possible to do uh, experiments. Um, again, again, occasionally it's possible to appeal to experimental evidence. Experiments have been done on the population. And indeed, you could argue that experiments are being done on the population as we speak. Could we get data from these uh, contrived or we could argue natural experiments why isn't this being done and collated with all these other bradford hill criteria analogy analogies or similarities between the observed association and any other associations so people that are dying now for example if they're dying of uh, one of the things people are dying now of course is heart disease are there other things that can cause heart disease that can cause similar manifestations to what we're seeing? Uh, there are. There are. Uh, these can be taken in context with the other Bradford Hill criteria and uh, causes could be isolated if only this work was being done by our authorities. Reversibility. Um, if you take away the cause, the effect may go. But this does depend on whether any permanent damage has been caused. 
So if there's any permanent damage to tissues, for example, if there was damage to the myocardium because part of its blood supply had been cut off and you take away whatever caused that, I'm afraid that heart damage is not going to regenerate because brain cells and heart cells don't regenerate. You get scar tissue formation, but you don't get mitotic regeneration of the damaged tissue. So sometimes the effects can be reversible. Other times, tragically, they are not. And when people find out, the health authorities find out what's causing the excess deaths and the factors that are causing the excess deaths, uh, let's hope that not too many are caused by or the pathology is not causing permanent damage in those of us that uh, still remain. So there we are, World Health Authorities. Can I uh, advocate the Bradford Hill criteria to you? It's a new idea. I don't expect you to be fully up to date. It only goes back to 1965, but it's just a suggestion. So unfortunately, um, there are still excess deaths in all age groups in many countries and um, I am not satisfied with the explanations we're getting and I'm not satisfied with the sheer deafening silence, to be quite honest, that we're getting from politicians and from our health authorities. The silence is not acceptable. But thank you for watching.